realize how easy it must have been to um, be successful in like the 1800s? Literally uh, now, and the thing is, it's only gonna get harder in all likelihood. But now you have to invent like a new atom. You have to discover a new element or build a large hadron collider to cause two protons to hit each other at as close to the speed of light as we can possibly get and then infer from the data after the collision the existence of a subatomic particle that's otherwise unobservable. In 1871, you were like, check it out. It's a ham sandwich with an egg on it. People were like, give this dude the Nobel Prize. It makes no sense whatsoever. It's in, and it's always uphill, man. The thing is, we're looking right now, we're saying it's so lucky to have been born in the 1800s. All you had to do was invent the croque monsieur. But now, in uh, 200 years, people are going to be like, in the 2000s, all you had to do was invent AI. Now you got to, you know, discover a wormhole in outer space that can take you to a distant nebula. They didn't know how good they had it back. Because in 1871, they were probably like, Imagine how you, all you had to do was literally, you know, cook the dough in the oven in a different shape. And people were like, oh, my God, long bread instead of circular bread. Anyway, we're playing Poke Doku here. Evolved by friendship. They, they Honestly, Poke Doku, I saw that you tweeted me. It's nice that you have a, a normie that you can laugh at, okay? You can watch me and be like, ha, ha. Silly, simple NL. Always guesses Chikorita. By the way, thank you, Totally Envy, for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. But it's getting too hard, okay? What the hell does evolved by friendship mean? Mega evolved, I can kind of suss out myself. Branched evolution was only introduced to me yesterday. And now we've already added another wrinkle on top. Now, Sinnoh. Sinnoh is the second world, right? That's silver gold. It's Diamond Pearl. Okay, I don't know anything from Diamond Pearl. So that's, I didn't even know they had mega, mega evolutions in that. So this is screwed. Let's not even worry about that. Flying Mega Evolved. Charizard Mega Y. That's a gimme. Has branched evolution. Charizard. He could become Mega X or Mega Y. What? <laughs> Are you kidding me? How does that make sense, man? Grass has branched evolution. Scyther. He's, he's only bug. He's just green. You got it confused. Grass, mega evolved. I'm going to assume that there is a, a mega Venusaur. Venusaur mega. Okay, that's a big one for me. Um, and the rest are mighty tough. <laughs> The rest are mighty tough indeed. Check this out. Grass, Credilly. Credilly, Silly, Millie, Billy, Silly, Lily, Yilly, Trilly. Dan reading a, an Isaac seed. Flying branched evolution. Rayquaza can either become Rayquaza Mega or Squawkabilly Blue Plumage. Wait a second. Squawkabilly. Squawk. Look at how many plumages there could possibly be. What? <laughs> how can that not be? Read it. A pre-Evo Pokemon that evolves into two. I love how you thought that that was going to teach me what I did wrong. Squawk. Squawkabilly is not. That's not evolutions. Those are different forms. Charles Darwin arguing with the green goblin mask well aboard the beagle en route to the Galapagos Islands excludes mega and G-Max forms are you telling me Squ Squawkabilly blue plumage is a mega evolution it doesn't have mega in it there's no way this dude's mega he's like a little tiny lad it is this is the mega evolution is Squawkabilly white plumage That makes no sense. It says a different Pokedex number. Brother, I don't even know what Squawkabilly is. And now you're like, it doesn't have this, it has the same number. How would I know? This shit is all made up. Everything's made up? No, it's not. The atomic weight of an element is not made up.
You know, the, the boiling point of water is not made up. This shit was all cooked up by Satoru Iwata, okay? Somewhere in Kyoto. And what the real question is not why don't I know it, it's why do you know it? Hey, Tanuki Parachute, thank you for the gifted subscriptions, by the way. Thank you. So I don't know what, I don't know what we're going to do here because I don't know what evolved by friendship could possibly mean. Um, maybe this relates to starters. A late grass starter... Rose, Roselia, maybe not a starter, but she looks like I would be friends with her. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Rosalia. The highest DPS grass Pokemon when I was still playing Pokemon Go. Okay, well, we got two guesses left. A fly, and that's a trick question, flying Pokemon... Uh, are not starters. It's, it's the most boring type possible. Evolved via friendship. Friendship. Who's a friendly flying guy? I would say Drifloon, for sure. Has branched evolution. I would say, you know what? This is our best, sh our best shot. <laughs> no, it's not. Sinnoh, Pokemon Diamond. Who the heck was on the cover of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl? There's only one explan explanation. It must be Clam Pearl. I guess Clam Pearl wasn't in Diamond Pearl. Okay. Palkia and Dialga? Isn't that that dude who rides the Peloton? Okay. Crobat, actually, to be honest with you, Crobat, I could have gotten. I know, I'm familiar with Crobat. Now, what, did, what else did we not get? We're, there's, I know Burmy. There's no shot I'm getting Burmy. Sinnoh, Branched Evolution. Are you, this is Branched Evolution? You're telling me that the, the plumage is being different uh, is just a different form. But Burmy being a different color but having exactly the same name is actually like a new Pokedex number? This shit doesn't make any sense. I, I refuse to feel bad about it. It doesn't make any sense. It's inconsistent. They're not playing by their own rules. You just have to know it. That's the strategy on this. You just have to know it. Scyther? I, oh, he's flying, not grass. Okay, flying bug. Applin, never seen this dude before in my life. And low punny? I mean, it's just simple. I, I simply don't know Sinnoh and I don't know Evolved by Friendship either. So. <laughs> I love people trying to explain the the evolutions of these pokemon as if it's not like an edge case they're like just so you know next time burmy can evolve into multiple different branches based on its gender okay does that apply to every pokemon or is that just something you got to learn about each of the 1200 that are in there okay you asked trust me if i did let's just say everybody makes mistakes i'm kind of content with three on that one okay Let's take a look at this. Let's get into some real media here. Someone riding a bicycle into a city. To me, this looks like the 2000s. I'm just going to call this Super 8. This is not the 2000s. Well, maybe it is because that seems to be Zoe Deschanel. This could be 500 Days of Summer, bro. I'm a fucking genius. <laughs> How'd you get it? I, I've seen this movie two times, and it has Zoe Deschanel, and this shit is not the happening. And I remember that Joseph Gordon-Levitt worked at a greeting card company in the movie. And this looks like a place that could make greeting cards. So, there we go. Big framed victory today. But would you give it on Letterbox? Um, I don't know. It's been um, it's been too long. I'd have to see it again. I think it, I have like kind of a Garden State relationship with Five Hundred Days of Summer. When I first saw it, I, I was like, um, "Wow, this movie speaks to me." Uh, and then, like two years later, I was like, "Fuck you!" No karaoke joint has 
Here Comes Your Man by the Pixies. This shit is like a made up mani- manic pixie dream girl, uh, indie loving, sensitive introvert, kind of like fucking wet dream, two out of five contrived garbage. I think I'd have to see it again and, and find how it, how it hits me as an older man. Because I think I, I wasn't reviewing it when I saw it earlier. I was reviewing myself and how I, how I felt about what I thought it was trying to do instead of what it did. Prior to 2024, the Lions' last playoff win was a 38-6 win in the divisional round in January of 1992 over this current-day NFC East team. Easy, New York Giants. We'll take those. (laughs) Drafted ninth overall by Utah, this small forward made his lone career All-Star team during his final year in the Jazz with the Jazz in 2017 before moving out east. John Moxley. Wait, with Johnson? Wasn't there a Johnson who played for the Hawks? Al <laughs> Al Johnson. Elise Johnson. John Johnson. Al Horford. Wrong. That's incorrect. You're thinking of John Moxley. Okay, my mistake. SP Ben Sheets, what a name, totaled 86 wins for this National League team. That's a gimme. Um, It's the San Diego Padres. Okay. Not uncommon. This American author is most famous for The Catcher in the Rye. That's J.D. Salinger. Finally, some some good fucking material. This is Alan DeGeneres' face. On Joey Fatone's head. Joey Fatone. Yes! <laughs> oh. Originally meant to be paired with onion rings, zesty sauce has been part of this chain's condiment lineup since 2001. <laughs> I have no idea. It's... Arby's has horsey sauce, zesty sauce. It must be from a place that has onion rings. Which in Canada, I would think of A&W, but America doesn't care about A&W the same way we do. I don't think Burger King has onion rings. They have zesty, though. Zesty sounds like a made-up flavor, something that Burger King would sell. And the other thing is it could simply be a chain that I'm not that familiar with. So... In that case, I'll be a, oh, yes! <laughs> I was just willing to forgive myself if it was like checkers or something like that. That's huge. Debuting on The CW in 2013, starring Anna Sophia Robb and Austin Butler, The Carrie Diaries was a prequel to It Must Be Sex and the City. Nicolas Cage won the Oscar. Um, If you ask Reddit, this would be Willy's Wonderland, but in the real world, it is leaving Las Vegas. Windmill, windmill for the land, turn forever hand in hand is from Feel Good Incorporated. All right, those are gimmies. Average score today, 3.7. Let me guess, the top three? No, movies, really? Movies, 30%, 70% of people got it wrong. It, this is really throwing me for a loop simply because of the fact that books beat movies in like a bar stool sports trivia game. I mean, that's crazy to me, personally. Chain restaurants was hard too. The, the, the highest one was Celebrity Mashup. I thought we were digging deep into the vault for Joey Fatone. I know he has like a, a show, maybe he does like name that tune or something, but still. Nuts, peppers, dessert, rats. Fuzzy cherry maroon. Seashells, fudge, strand. Shoot, sprinkles, darn, ditch, woodchuck, curses. 
Okay. Just thinking. I mean, like, these are members of Rodentia. Ah, uh, darn, curses, rats, and nuts. Four corners, things you say uh, in 1951 when you stub your toe. What? Fudge. Ah, fake swear words. This is actually nonsense. I'm... Shoot. <laughs> Shoot. Darn. Rats. Nuts. Are you kidding me? Sunday toppings. Oh, no, no. Who says nuts? Bro, I just watched Quiz Show. The movie takes place in 1958. People were saying rats, nuts, curses. Why did you watch it? Because it's fucking great cinema. Sorry, I wasn't on my 18th rewatch of Everything Everywhere All at Once. So I think I'm me with the red herring. I, what I should have done is taken the hard way out. I shouldn't have just uh, been like, oh, I'm one off. Let's brute force it. I should, have, I should have been more difficult or gone the more difficult route. JFK's successor, LBJ. Taking out the trash, chore. With two down, it has tripled in size since the time of the Australopithecines. Brain. Once more, again, first U.S. coin to feature a president. Penny. So I, I'm going to guess this is not CBAP. Bloke. Enormous. Huge. It's not brain. Ch it's chap. Human. When my goat is washed and then gets dirty again. Ooh, 42 seconds, huh? What can I say? Here we go. <laughs> Nothing makes you feel more like livestock in a good way than going to Costco and buying Pura Vita roasted veg melange, four pounds. Roasted vegetable or frozen vegetables, which I'm assuming this is. It's real cheap. Cheaper than you'd expect. Now, there are some peppers in there. That's an expensive uh, vegetable. But I'm going to imagine there's a lot more of the, the cheap stuff in there. It's vegetarian. These vegetables contain no meat. It's gluten-free. Here we go again. Let me guess. Plant-based. <laughs> Four pounds of roasted vegetables. I'm going to say, honestly... That's a 10.99 Andy. I'm going to go with my gut on these from now on. It's slightly more expensive. I'll go 12.99. I'll go 13.99. It's 14.49. Okay, not too bad. Not too bad. That is really cheap. 4 pounds of vegetables for 15 bucks. My ass is not buying that. Bro, it's 4 pounds of vegetables. Four pounds, Jeremy. Four pounds? It's really expensive. It's four pounds, bro. Four dollars a pound is cheap? Yeah, if they roasted it for you. Uh, listen, I'm just going to give you a secret about the real world, okay? You're going to have to pay for something. Okay, if you want, you can go to the grocery store and it's perfectly fine. You can go to the grocery store. You can buy probably depending on the grocery store, the same ingredients, four pounds of them for less. And then you can roast them yourself. Okay, there's no problem. You know, it's just you, you pay a little extra for them to have cooked it in advance. You're too rich pilled. Costco is the cheapest grocery store, brother. It's cheaper than no frills. 
That's not being rich pill. That's if you go to any other grocery store, that shit would be like twenty two ninety nine here. Walmart, well, yeah, but I prefer like <laughs> that Costco. You get like the apple is like this big, and then at Walmart, you're like, holy cow, these apples are cheap, and the apples are like literally like this big, and you get like a one serving is like nine apples. It's I don't know what they're doing. They're getting if they have to put the antibiotics on the apples to grow them that big. That's what I want. We don't have Aldi, okay? You know you're rich pilled when you say Costco's the cheapest grocery store? Your ass needs to come to Canada, quite frankly. If your ass lives in Iowa and you got 18 different grocery stores, plus you can just go to the, the 4-H supply store and get cornmeal straight out of the bucket, then by all means. We don't have that here because our FDA actually has some teeth, all right? Why don't you come out here? Go shop around. Why don't you go to Loblaws, Real Canadian Superstore, save on foods, or as I call it, spend on foods, and then go to Costco and tell me which store is the cheapest. Your ass needs to come to West Virginia. When you build something, I'll be there. <laughs> I'm not going to the mining museum, okay? You need, some, you need a sports team that's not college sports either. I'm talking a professional sports team or some history unrelated to the Civil War, and you may see me, because I'm not coming for the terrain. Just for that, though, I'm going to say the United States of America. No, I did not mean Azerbaijan. Do I look like I know what an Azerbaijan is? I said the United States of America. 5,000 kilometers away from America. I'm going Chile mode. Keep it American themed. Chile is cooler. Yeah, like in the wintertime, maybe. Um, the United Kingdom. What? Could, it, could this be going off of Hawaii? Because <laughs> that doesn't make a lick of sense. Unless maybe, how, we don't know how far away Chile is. What if it's like Honduras? It's closer to Chile than it is to Honduras, but it's closer to America than it is to, by a lot. I, I can't do the capitalization or the, the, the triangulation on this. It's closer to these two than to this one. <laughs> How the fuck does that make any fucking sense, bro? And then it's the furthest from the United Kingdom. What? Okay. Maybe, maybe it's from Alaska and it's like Mon uh, Mongolia. I was about to click on the map where I thought it was. That's a different quiz. Mon it's closer to the U.S. and Mongolia. You ever hear of a little country by the name of Indonesia? Here we go. 2,000 kilometers from Indonesia. Hit you with a little Laos. That's cooler, bro. Okay, hit you with a little India. Fuck you, bro. Um, it's Palau. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. It's... Um, we did Solomon Islands yesterday, right? But let's just, let's do it anyway. It's very close to the Solomon Islands. It's American Samoa. Okay, it's Samoa. That's colder. Don't be an idiot. It's, um... New Zealand? <laughs> no, no, no. It's warmer, okay. It's, um... Tahiti. Did you mean Haiti? No, I did not. It's Fiji. Fiji's warmer. I hope so. Um, it's... Vanuatu. Yes! Okay, that, I mean, 14 guesses is bad, but that's a really, really, really hard one. That's a really tough one. If you're going to give 14 guesses on anything... It should be Vanuatu. I've never even heard of it. 
Uh, VIP Daniel, mods, put a lump of coal in their stocking, please. Educate this person about Vanuatu. This is a joke, right? I mean, this, this must be a joke. Boxing Day sales. It's January the 19th today. Boxing Day was like almost an entire month ago. I'm not buying a, a sectional from Boss Leather Furniture. You're not going to get me like that. This country, by the way, I'm pretty sure it's the United States of America. That's a big one. No, he's no way. July 5th, 1991 is today's box office game. It's its first week. It grossed $31 million, and yet it's grossed $52 million. That's Hollywood accounting. Biggest movies of 1991 in the summertime. Summertime 91? Starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Opened to 52 million in 1991. It's like a year too late, too early for Terminator 2. Could this be total recall? No. July. In Ju We're going to come back to that one. That one's tricky. July 1991. I got to think about that. Paramount Pictures. It's made a good amount of money for the era. Leslie Nielsen. This is probably Lethal Weapon, or um, Naked Gun. I'm gonna say it's two and a half, The Smell of Fear. <laughs> oh! You see that, um, the, the tweet where it's Frank Drebin from Police Squad, as if he's booking uh, Light Yagami into the police station by writing his name in the death note. I would not besmirch Leslie Nielsen by even trying to come up with the quote from memory, but it ends with him. Oh, what a nice uh, notebook you've got there. I'll just write your name in it to make sure that we don't forget it. So that's Light Yagami, huh? Okay, take a seat. Anyway, I thought it was good and I've never even seen death note, but I'm familiar with the premise. Police Squad is it's an incredible show. And Naked Gun is also very good. At least the first one. And then the other ones have their moments. You haven't seen Death Note? Don't talk to me. You, your ass hasn't seen The Godfather Part 2. I haven't seen The Godfather Part 2 either because they haven't put that shit on Canadian Disney Plus on the Peloton yet. But I'm not putting anybody else's media choices on trial here. Twenty-one percent dip, but it's going to a hundred milli. This is a big play. This is like Kevin Cos. This dances with wolves. It's not dances with wolves. I'm not a big Costner head. We'll need to come back to that one. It's too early for Waterworld. Could be like some some Bull Durham stuff. Columbia Pictures, starring Billy Crystal. Definitely could be When Harry Met Sally. Definitely could be City Slickers 1. Okay, City Slickers 1. Five million to seven million. Call that Hollywood accounting. Starring John Ritter. Look who's talking. We'll come back to that one. <laughs> um... What's the cheapest reveal? Budget. 102 million? Fuck it. Terminator 2. Okay. It's nothing personnel, kid. I thought this came out in 1993 for some reason. Kevin Costner. Action adventure drama. A Robin Hood Prince of Thieves? Yes, this lines up. Because of uh, Brian Adams, everything I do, I do it for you. Is every Robin Hood movie obligated to have the same cover? Like, I, I get that he's famous for shooting arrows, but really, like, every single one is him going, 
Even the Russell Crowe one is like that. Men in Tights is like this, but he's got like seven arrows or something. Now this one. John Ritter? He's bad. She's worse. It's Problem Child. I can see this. It's like a blue to white gradient. And then there's a kid on the front of it going like this. I saw it in the video store all the time. Problem Child 2? Oh, it, Problem Child 1, bring it, put up the video that has Problem Child 1 VHS cover, okay? Because I can't speak for Problem Child 2. 78th percentile today. That's pretty good, though. It's not bad. Librarian's on a break. Librarian probably doesn't know that I'm live because I didn't tweet that I'm going live. They're going to join and be like, he's live, serial. I got a lot of clips to do. No, they're on a plane right now. We were on a break. My sandwich. My sandwich. Hey, APT432, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Don't you stream the same time every day? I know, he could have booked his flight, like, you know, in keeping with my schedule. Dark waters to a few good men. So we're trying to get from Mark Ruffalo to Tom Cruise, Demi Moore, uh, Kevin Bacon, Jack Nicholson, more bacon. You don't mind if I do. <laughs> oh, man, don't mind if I, more bacon. Demi Moore, Kevin Bacon, don't mind if I do. Okay, okay, let me think about this for just a moment. Just a moment, if you will. There should be a relatively easy connection, of course. Uh, there is. Tim Robbins, High Fidelity, Jack Black, Tropic Thunder, Tom Cruise, A Few Good Men. Now... Three links is pretty low, and then 30 seconds is really low. Short as possible. Mark Ruffalo in the cut, Kevin Bacon, a few good men. I, don't, I simply only know that Mark Ruffalo and Meg Ryan are in the cut, so I'm not going to in the cut just on a lark, but fair enough. I can't argue with reality. Tib Robbins, Mystic River. Mm, that's true. Mystic River, more bacon. Tim Robbins is in Top Gun? I thought he only did good movies. I didn't say Top Gun Maverick. Everybody loves Top Gun Maverick. Is that my daughter in there? Okay, I know this. This is Sim City 2. Excuse me? This is SimCity 1? There's no shot they don't have SimCity in here. Sin City? SimCity? Brother, I've played this. This is a damn nuclear power plant or so. I've played this game. This is SimCity. Am I losing my mind? How about SimCity Creator? Oh, it's the right franchise. Okay, Metacritic score too old. Oh, because it's one motherfucking word, you piece of crap. SimCity 2000. Piece of shit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'll take it. Kids these days couldn't handle SimCity 2000 because they force you to build roads. There would be Steam refunds nonstop. They would have like a 31% on Steam reviews. I tried to create a Nordic... Uh, Utopia with exclusively public transportation and no roads. They didn't let me. Until they make this game more realistic, I have to give it a thumbs down. Okay, but they should let you. This shit was built by two dudes in a broom closet. Show some respect. Hey, APT432, thank you again. Thank you. Is 
This is <laughs> Eternal Darkness, Sanity's Requiem. Um, this is, um, 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 I don't know. Skip me. Dragon's Lair. It's not Dragon's Lair. If you look like this, call me. Ghouls, ghosts, and okay. Castlevania, Super Castlevania 4. Not even the right franchise. King's Quest. Oh, Medieval! Sir Daniel Fortescue! Medieval. Medieval 2. How do you know this? I asked for Medieval 1 for Christmas, like 1998. And? I probably played like three levels and then was like, this shit's too hard. I'm going back to quarterback club 98. That's how in the pre-internet era, that's how lots of gaming went. With Favre on the cover. Yes, not Troy Aikman. Troy Aikman might have been like 96, 97. I had, I had the Favre cartridge personally. Game they'll guess. Don't even, man. Don't even. I have a streak in this. Medieval 2. I must preserve my streak. We, getting one green is huge. It's later than the year 2000 and did not come out on the PlayStation 1. <clears throat> not published by Sony is actually relevant information, though. Let's go, um, let's go with a Microsoft game. Let's go, uh, Brute Force was co-op. Let's go with Halo Combat Evolved. That's multiplayer, you fool. Let's go with Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell. The first one had no multiplayer. It's later than 2002. I find that hard to believe. It's not a shooter. It is an action adventure, if I had to guess, that is like isometric or side-scrolling. Very interesting, very interesting indeed. How about Mark of the Ninja 2012? It's earlier than 2012, it's not side view. <clears throat> okay, it must be Diablo 3. That's also 2012. It must be Torchlight. It is isometric between 2009 and 2012. It is isometric. <laughs> it's Bastion. It's Bastion, boys. Yes! <laughs> A, a three streak in game, they'll guess. Give me a hit of the Benjamin. I've earned it. A new moon record. The kid just pogged for a while. Guess the movie. Oscar-nominated films, one word from 1996. It's an, a one-word action movie from 1996. Movie is called Ransom. Mm. The stunts, even show-stopping ones, such as our man throwing himself out of a plane without a parachute and landing on a car without sustaining an injury, have an air of desperation about them. From 1996, huh? Um, Ronin. No doubt about it, Blank has its moments. Did I mention the nifty scene with 100 flying drill bits? But the third act is a real letdown, and there's no escaping the ring of familiarity. There's no shot it's Goldeneye, bro. 
that's that's going to have like a, a 91 on Rotten Tomatoes. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Vanessa Williams. This is a movie called Eraser. There we go. We're, what was this nominated for? Best Arnold Schwarzenegger movie of the year? Was it good? I never saw it. I just remembered that my parents bought it on pay-per-view. Um, and then like a minute into the movie, they were like, you should go to your room. Like, don't watch this one. People's heads were getting blown off by like a, a laser gun or something. I was eight years old. It was nominated for Best Sound Effects Editing. That's, it's a perfectly cromulent award. Heath Ledger, Scarlett Johansson, Adrian Brody, 95 to 2015 genre drama, nominated for an acting Oscar. Okay, I mean, this is a gimme, bro. Genre drama, detachment. Which we only learned about this week. Nominated for an acting Oscar, it simply must be The Pianist. Released from 95 to 2015. I always get confused. I, I want to go splice on this one, but I have to remember. I think he's in splice. He's in splice. Don't get don't get it twisted. We take those. It's obviously you could have gone King Kong. Probably the Grand Budapest Hotel is right around the end of this you know this window, but three point three percent is pretty good. Scarlett Johansson nominated for an acting Oscar. Genre drama. Okay, genre drama. Ghost World. Should be a fairly low percentage poll. Scarlett Johansson nominated. Okay, released to 1995 to 2015. Home Alone 3. Nominated for an acting Oscar. Was the Academy cool enough to nominate her for Under the Skin? Was she, uh, she must have been nominated for something for Lost in Translation. Let's go the safe route here. What? They disrespected her? They disrespect Scarlett Johansson's performance in Lost in Translation? Heath Ledger, 95 to 2015. Let's go 10 Things I Hate About You. Heath Ledger, genre drama. I mean, the, nominated for an acting Oscar, you got to play Brokeback Mountain. And then genre drama. Drama is a tough one, to be honest with you. I mean, is a Knight's Tale a drama? It's not really like anything. Is the Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus a drama? Is the Dark Knight a drama? So I'd say the Dark Knight is a thriller. What about, is, he's not in Cold Mountain, is he? Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger. I'm saying A Knight's Tale, bro. That, that movie has drama coming out of its everything. I want to keep going first, just because like Scarlett Johansson must, may, maybe she wasn't nominated for Under the Skin, but she should have been. In that case, she was nominated for Jojo Rabbit. Everybody makes mistakes. Who'd she get nominated for in Jojo Rabbit? Best mom on TV. We're still top 38%. I'll take it. Oh, marriage story. In the inimitable words from Rob Reiner's A Princess Bride, marriage. Still did pretty good today. Top 38. We take those. That's actually an office quote that you're plus twoing, just for the record. Bro, she should have been nominated for um, Lost in Translation. Just for the record. And uh, listen, I don't know. I'm not an acting Andy. I don't know if she should have been nominated for Jojo Rabbit, but I'll tell you that the movie itself should have zero Oscar nominations to its name. No disrespect to Sam Rockwell. No disrespect to Stephen Merchant. Some disrespect to um, Taika Waititi. Just some, not a lot, just some.
No one should have been nominated for Lost in Translation. You think Sofia Coppola shouldn't have been directed or nominated for Best Director for Lost in Translation, motherfuck? Really? We didn't name five other better directed movies from 2003. Uh, 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 Harry Potter and the... Shut the fuck up, bro. Alfonso Cuaron could get his flowers. We're not giving shit to Christopher Columbus for the Chamber of Secrets, okay? Mind your own business. Lost in translation, mid as hell? Nah, you just can't understand it until you've flown to South Korea to teach English for a year in a pre-Zoom era. Just remember um, when I landed? Well, like before I got on the plane, my mom gave me an international calling card and said, uh, call us when you get there so we know you're okay. I landed, went to sleep, woke up to the news that North Korea was shelling an island off the coast of South Korea and was kind of like, all right, I got to get something to eat anyway before I call my mom. Went to the convenience store. I don't speak Korean. I handed him the international calling card and basically went like, help me. And he basically went, I don't know how to help you. And I said, all right, I'm going back to my hotel room. <laughs> my mom found out I was okay like four days later when I went to my first day of work and I emailed her from the school computer. A lot of you guys can't handle 90s maxing, okay? Nowadays, you just send a text when you land. You'd be like, hi, mom, I just landed. In 2011, the world was very, very different. Why not go to a PC bong? I did go to a PC bong, and the email account I signed into at the PC bong got compromised like the day after I logged in there. Like the, I woke up the morning after I went to the PC bong, checked my email, and there was like a thousand like listserv, like you did, you don't have permission to like send this, uh, it, like to everybody on my contact list. And I was like, that's the last time I use one of these. I thought it was PC bang. You're not ready. You need some more time in the back to tank. You're not ready. Who's going to tell him? Just think about this, okay? Just think about this. Played on one team for their entire career. That's freaking tough, bro. <laughs> um, New York Islanders, one team for their entire career. Mike Bossy. There you go. That's a gimme. St. Louis Blues played on one team for his entire career. See, that's a, that's, that's a tough one. That's a real tough one. Uh, well, I was going to say Tarasenko, but that's not true, is it? It's got to be someone that they just drafted, but they've been good lately, so they haven't drafted that high. So I don't know who it is because it sure as shit ain't Aaron Johnson or Eric Johnson. This must be Jason Robertson. Okay, so that's not that hard. But this one, I got to think about. I wonder if Colton Pareko has played for your team for the entirety of his career. Now, Montreal, St. Louis, that's a gimme. Doug Gilmore, with a U, please. Always love seeing this guy's year 2001 haircut here. Dallas <clears throat> and Montreal, that's Andy Moog. Now, this should be easy enough. I want to say it's someone with a French-Canadian last name. Their name is Jean-Gabriel Peugeot or um, David Descharnay or... Um, I got to think about it. <laughs> Oilers and Blues. Simple. That's Grant Fuhr. Oilers and Stars. This is Alice Hemsky. Now, here's the real question. Oilers and Islanders. I want to say Doug Waite on this one. And then oil, or, uh, Islanders and Canadiens. Canadiens. 
You got to think about this one. This one's a, a thinker for me. I definitely feel the pull of the, the French Canadian last name. And then Blues, one team for career. I'll just be honest with you. I don't have a good guess. I'm going to assume that. But 10 years is a long time, man, for one guy to play on the same team. It's possible, but that is like, it's a long time. Yes! <laughs> He's going to the moon today. It's not Patrick Waugh. It's not Jocelyn Thibault. It's not David Abisher. It's Yaroslav Halak. Goalies will never steer you wrong. Yeah! That, we don't get this too often, okay? Give me the stats on this, Andy. I mean, I don't even need to look at this. I'm sorry to say. Best game. Did we have anybody in common with the best game? We did not. I did not have Honka or Gump Worsley. Gump Worsley? Dude played for the Dallas Stars? How is that even possible? Gump Worsley played hockey in like 1930. That doesn't make sense. Rob Ramage. Jeff Cordnell? That's really tough. Andy Sutton is a great pull. Dude went crazy as your fourth line center in NHL Hockey 2K5. Diduck, Gerard Diduck. Who the hell is Tuttle? Your girl looks lovely, Tuttle. What, you don't, you're not familiar with the works of Barbara Streisand? Today, I'd like to go from Liberia to Botswana. Okay. South Africa surrounds Botswana. Uh. <laughs> Mozambique. Zimbabwe. That's what I meant. Zimbabwe. Oh, Jesus Christ. I got nine more guesses. It's very doable. I almost feel like it'd be better to go like cut up and then go down through like Algeria, but I, I may be incorrect. How about a little Mali? No, no, no. Mali is too far, uh, but it is big. Maybe Mali can be a connector. Oh, motherfucker. It's, it's, it's optimal. And then like obviously Burkina Faso's in here. And Côte d'Ivoire, sorry, as you call it, the Ivory Coast. There we go. Okay, now, we may actually already be sunk, but we have to try. Like, surely we can connect via Chad? And then we can, we, we have to commit to this path, I think, at this point. We abandon this side. Uganda will be involved in this at some point. <laughs> uh, Somalia gets us to the coast. Uh, we're cooked, lads. Rwanda. <laughs> it's the tiniest country. Canada. The United States of America and Mexico. We put it on the map. I have no idea, quite frankly. I have, n I have no clue. We forgot about Namibia, Angola, and, well, just about every other country in Africa, to be honest. <laughs> it's an indictment of the Ontario school system. I mean, we didn't learn shit about, like, Europe, basically. Half the people in an Ontario middle school can't even name every Canadian province. And then you want them to know the name and relative geographic position of every country in Africa? It's simply not going to happen. Sometimes I'm amazed by his movie knowledge. Then I go and see him do that. That's because you're exhibiting something called the halo effect. Because I'm so handsome, you think I'm good at everything? It's not true. I'm bad at a few things. 
African geography is definitely amongst them. You uh, suffer from a graver affliction, I would say, and that's not being nice to the people around you, especially those that you respect by virtue of granting them your time, by being in their chat. And that's going to be way worse for you than not knowing the relative position of Cameroon. Dynamic Warpath, thank you for the gifted subscriptions, by the way. Thank you. I'm willing to bet 99% of chat couldn't get that either. No, 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 no. Chat is very familiar with the African geography because when they should have been invited to a party in 11th grade, instead they were out here playing Sporkle, okay? Now, I did the same thing, but my Sporkle quizzes just happened to be about movies instead of geography. I'm more interested in, uh, in culture, I guess, in art than maps. So sue me. Because in culture, there's debate. There's meat on the bone of discussion, you know? Geography, I see why it appeals to people. Something is a distinct shape. I was going to say always has been, always will be, but I don't think that's true. Um, but you know exactly its location. You can be right or you can be wrong. And simplifying the world down to this sort of like right or wrong thinking is very appealing as we live in a complicated mythos right now. I prefer to be like, you know, what's better, dodgeball or old school? Well... To be honest with you, dodgeball's got some laughs, but I think that it's kind of... So what I'm looking for here. I feel like Ben Stiller debases himself a little bit by getting involved in these kind of like comedy films that are just like he has a mustache on. I feel like he can, he can ascend to a higher level of acting than that. There is a Chuck Norris cameo. You're not wrong. Hang on, slash marker me. 